Okay, I'm concentrating now on the key question of stability. Do the solutions approach zero in case of linear equations? Do they approach some constant, some steady state in the case of nonlinear equations? So today is the beginning of nonlinear. I'll start with one equation. dy dt is some function of y not a linear function, probably. And first question, what is a steady state or critical point? Easy question. I'm looking at special points y, capital Y, where the right-hand side is zero. Special points where the function is zero. And uh, I, I'll call those critical points or steady states. W what's the point? At a critical point, here's the solution. It's a constant. It's steady. The, because I, I'm just checking here that the equation is satisfied. The derivative is zero, because it's constant, and f is zero because it's a critical point. So I have zero equals zero. The differential equation is, is perfectly good. So if I start at a critical point, I stay there. That's not our central question. Our key question is, if I start at other points, do I approach a critical point, or do I go away from it? Is, is the critical point stable and attractive? Or is it unstable and repulsive? So the way to answer that question is to look at the equation when you're very near the critical point. Very near the critical point, we could make the equation linear. We can linearize the equation. And that's the whole trick. And I've spoken before, and I'll do it again now, for one equation, but the real message the real content comes with two or three equations. Uh, that's what we see in nature very often, and we want to know, is the, uh, is the problem stable? OK, so what does linearize mean? I'm, if every function is linear if you look at it through a microscope. If you see it just if you, maybe I should say, if you blow it up near y equal y, every function is linear. Here's, here's f of y. Here it's coming through, or it's a graph of f of y, whatever it is. Here's this we recognize as the point capital Y, right? That's where the function is zero. And near that point, my function is almost a straight line. And the slope of that tangent is the coefficient, and it's everything depends on that. Everything depends on whether the slope is going up like that, probably that's un going to be unstable, or coming down. If it were coming down, then the slope would be negative at the critical point, and probably that will be stable. OK, so I just have to do a little calculus. The whole idea of linearizing is the central idea of calculus, that we have curves, but near a point, we can pretend we can, they are essentially straight if we focus in, if we zoom in. So this is a zooming in problem, linearization. OK, so if I zoom in, the function at some y, I'm zooming in around the point capital Y. So, but you remember the tangent line stuff. The is the function at Y. So, I'm, little y is some point close by. Capital Y is the crossing point, and this is the Y minus Y times the slope. That's the slope. The slope at the, at the 
critical point there is all that you see, the, the right hand side is linear. And actually f of y is zero. That's the point. So that I have just a linear approximation with that slope and a simple function. OK. So I'll use this approximation. I'll put that into the equation. And then I'll have a linear equation, which I can easily solve. Can I do that? So my plan is take my differential equation, look, focus near the steady state, near the critical point, capital Y. Near that point, this is my good approximation to F, and I'll just use it. So I plan to use that right away. So now here's the linearized. So d by dt of y equals f of y. But I'm going to do approximately equals this y minus capital Y times the slope. So the slope is my coefficient little a in my first order linear equation. So I'm I'm going back to chapter one for this linearization for one equation, but then the next video is the real thing by allowing two equations or even three equations. So we'll make a small start on that, but it's really the next video. OK, so that, that's the equation. Now, I, notice that I could put dy dt is the derivative of that constant is zero, so I could safely put it there. So what does this tell me? Let, let, me, let me call that number a. So I can solve that equation. And the, equa the, the solution will be y minus capital Y. It's just linear. The derivative is the thing itself times a. It's the pure model of steady growth or steady decay. Uh, y minus the y is, a pro go, is, let's say, some e to the at, right? When I have the coefficient in the linear equation a y, I see the, I see it in the exponential. So a less than zero is stable. Because a less than zero, that's negative, and the exponential goes drops to zero, and that tells me that y approaches capital Y, it goes to the to the critical point, to the steady state, and not away. Example, example. Let me just take an example that you've seen before. The logistic equation where the right side is, say, 3y minus y squared. OK, not linear. So I plan to linearize after I find the critical points. Critical points, this is 0. That equals 0 at, I guess there will be two critical points, because I have a second degree equation. When that is 0, it could be 0 at y equals 0 or at y equal 3. So two critical points. And each critical point has its own linearization, its own its slope at that critical point. So you, you see, I'm here, if I graph f of y here, this 3y minus y squared has, there's 3y minus y squared. There's one critical point, 0. There's the other critical point at 3. Here the slope is positive, unstable. Here the slope is negative, stable. So this is stable, unstable. And let me just push through the numbers here. So the, so the df dy, that's the slope. So I have to take the derivative of that. 
Notice, this is not my differential equation. There is my differential equation. Here is my linearization step, my computation of the derivative, the slope. So the derivative of that is 3 minus 2y. And I've got two critical points. At capital Y equals 0, that's 3. And at capital Y equals 3, it's 3 minus 6, it's minus 3. Those are the slopes we saw in the picture. Slope up, the parabola is going up, slope down. So this will correspond to an unstable. So what does it mean for this to be unstable? It means that the solution y equals 0, constant 0, solves the equation, no problem. If y is, stays at 0, it's a perfectly OK solution. The derivative is 0, everything is 0. But if I move a little away from 0, if I move a little away from 0, then the 3y minus y squared, what does it look like? If, if I'm moving just a little away from y equals 0, away from this unstable point, y squared will be extremely small. So it's really 3y. It'll, it'll grow, the, the, the y squared will be small near y equals 0. Forget that. We have exponential growth, e to the 3t. We leave the, we leave the 0 steady state and we move on. Now, eventually, we'll move somewhere near the, no the other steady state. At y equal, at capital Y equals 3, the slope, th this slope of this thing is minus 3, and that negative 1 will be a stable point. So where y minus 3, the distance, the distance to the, to the, steady state, the critical point, will grow like e to the minus, well, will decay. Sorry, I said grow, I meant decay. Will decay like e to the minus 3t. Because the minus 3 in the slope is the minus 3 in the exponent. OK, that's not rocket science, although it's pretty important for rockets. Uh, let me just say what's coming next and then do it in the follow-up video. So what's coming next will be two equations, dy dt and dz dt. I have two things, y and z, that depend on each other. So the, the Growth or decay of y depend, is given by some function f, and this is given by some different <coughs> function z, uh, g. So, so f and g. Now, when do I have steady state? When this is 0, when they're both 0. They both have to be 0. And then dy dt is 0, so it's y is steady. dz dt is 0, so z is steady. So I'm looking for, I've got two numbers to look for, and I've got two equations. F of y, oh, let me call it capital Y, capital Z. So those are numbers now, equals 0. So I want to solve equals 0, and G of capital Y, capital Z equals 0. Yeah, yeah. So I have the two, both right-hand sides should be zero, and then, the, then I'm in a steady state. But this is going to be like more interesting to linearize. That's really the next video, is how do you linearize? What does the linearized thing look like when you have two functions depending on two variables, y and z? You're going to have, we'll see, four slopes. Well, you'll see it. So that, this is what's coming, uh, and we end up with a two-by-two two matrix, because we have two equations, two unknowns, and uh, a little more excitement than the classical single equation 
like a logistic equation. Okay, onward to two.